There is hope in your struggle and what people put you through. It might seem like there is no hope and that you go through a lot at times, probably dealing with people, dealing with other situations, circumstances. But God is saying to someone on today, there is hope in your struggle. What you're going through will make you stronger. It will make you wiser. God is chipping out all the bad in you and making you perfect according to his divine purpose for your life. This is what God is doing. You might have been mistreated. You might have been abused. You might have been neglected. Everything that you went through has a purpose. And there is hope in that struggle that God brought you up out of. All this that you went through, the trials and tribulations, is strengthening your spirit. It's more to it than just your physical man. It's strengthening you spiritually. God knows what you can handle. He said he would not put more on you than you can bear. God knows what you can handle. God woke you up this morning to give him praise and glory. Sometimes we fall short in our spirit. When we don't pray when we're supposed to pray. When we don't fast when we need to fast. When we don't praise and worship when we need to praise and worship. Then that's when our flesh, the lust of the flesh and the temptations of the flesh start acting up and being worked up in your spirit. God wants you to have a calming spirit. And sometimes you just got to get on your hands and knees and say a little prayer. That God take it away. God saw that people mistreat you. He saw what that person said to you that wasn't right. He see these things. But how are you going to deal with the situation? Are you going to be evil like them? Or are you going to say, okay, God, I'm going to give it to you. Sometimes God just wants to, us to give our struggles to him and what people put us through and what we go through. Give it over to him and let it go. Give it over. Don't hang on to it. Because when you hang on to it, you're only upsetting your inner spirit. Then you're not at peace. And then you start worrying. And then when you start worrying, God can't work. Because God needs you at peace in order for him to work. Yeah, they might be chaotic. These people might not be peaceful for you. But God can make peace in your situation if you give it over to him. There is hope for where you're going. These people thought they destroyed you mentally, spiritually, emotionally. They did not destroy you. God is telling somebody today to get back to the peaceful place in your mind that he had for you. Get back to the peaceful place. I had a dream, a prophetic dream earlier regarding that. I was doing a lot of complaining lately, telling God that, I ain't been at peace with people. People has been disturbing my peace. And God was faithful enough to give me a dream this morning and bring me back to a place where I was working at Kroger's. I used to work at Kroger's. I ain't too proud or bougie to say that. When I, was, when I graduated high school back in 08 into 09, I worked at, in the deli department at Kroger's for about four years in Houston, Texas. I'll never forget off of 34th and Ella. That's where the Kroger's is at. Um, that's where I worked. And God was showing me in this dream that I was slicing deli meat, an oven go turkey to a customer. But my mind was at peace in the dream. And I was just shaving the meat and I gave it to the customer. Then I had a manager, somebody I'd never seen before. <laughs> He goes, Ashley, you're back at work. Go tell the supervisor. And I remember the supervisor to this day. I don't know if she still works there. He said, go tell her that you're at work. But when I woke up for the dream, I was trying to figure out why God showed me when I used to work at the deli back at Kroger's, back when I was in my early 20s. Why did he reveal that to me? And the Holy Spirit put on my heart, that's when you were at your peace. And it humbled me this morning. He said, get your peace back. That's when you were at your peace. 
before all the foolishness all throughout your 20s. That's when you were at peace, when you were slicing deli meat and cheese. That's when you were at your peace. Get back to that place in your mind. This is what the Holy Spirit told me today. So I'm sharing this with somebody else. God only can move when you at peace in your spirit, in your mind. Go back to the place where you were at peace. Do you remember a time in your life when you were at the most peace? That's where God needs you in order for him to work through your spirit. He know the struggles you went through. He know the hell you went through with people. He know all these things. But get back to your peace. Don't let people work up your spirit because they want to be evil and wicked and, and do things, say things to you that's not right in order to disturb your spirit. God said, don't let these people disturb your spirit. You should be at so much peace where people's words and the stuff they do should just flow off you like water. They do things that disturb your spirit be out of the wickedness and stuff that's what they're going through but don't let it get to you and we can learn this lesson from Yeshua even while he was on that cross why these people were being evil and crucifying him he didn't say a mumbling word and he was at peace he was at peace because that peace come from the inner spirit but sometimes our flesh tried to get the best of us. This is the word that God is trying to give to his children today. Sometimes our flesh will try to get the best of us. And our flesh want us to react by the flesh instead of by the spirit. God doesn't want us to act by our flesh. But by the spirit where the Holy Spirit dwells. You are one with the Holy Spirit. That's where you need to operate by. When that flesh act up, you tell that flesh to be quiet. Sometimes you got to go into prayer and pray the stuff off that you're feeling. Pray that off and be at peace. Be at inner peace. Praise and worship if you're feeling it in your flesh. If you're feeling something not right in your flesh, go and pray. See how you feel after you pray. You should feel a whole lot better. Sometimes that's a sign that you need to go pray. When your flesh start acting up and you want to go slap somebody or you feeling this negative energy on you, that ain't nobody but the enemy, the devil trying to get to you. Sometimes you just got to go pray and say, God, take that away. I shouldn't have that feeling, but take it away. This person just tried to disturb my spirit, but Heavenly Father, you take it away. I'm giving it over to you. And I'm a praise and worship and give you the glory today. Sometimes you just got to do that and then see how you feel. Sometimes you got to go take a walk from the stress. Sometimes you got to stop dealing with them people that's causing you stress. Just stop talking. Let them go. That's where God wants his children at. Don't let people work you up to the point where now you being crazy and psycho in your spirit. But work on being a better you. Despite what other people do and what they say. You can't control others, but you can control what you do in that situation that they're putting you in. Sometimes you just got to be quiet and just move forward and let it roll off you like water. Like when you're in the shower and the water just glide down your skin. Sometimes you just got to let what people say and do roll off off you just like that. That's what you got to do. So God can get the glory out of you at the end of the day and not you give over to the deeds of your flesh. And we know your flesh will fail you every time. God don't want you to operate like that. That's why you got to work on your inner spirit. God saw what they did. God saw what people put you through. God saw everything. But there's hope in that struggle. Just remember that. There's hope in your struggle. God wants to get the glory out of all your struggles. No matter what people do to you. What people say about you. God wants to get the glory. Let these people be where they are. 
If they don't want to grow spiritually and become a better person, leave them at the wayside. Leave them where they at. And you keep moving forward in your purpose that God got for you. That's all you can do. He saw the mistreatment. He saw that they didn't treat you right the majority of the time when you came to them with a loving spirit. But God is asking you to give it over to him. Let it go. Let these people go. Let God deal with them. He can do a better job than you can. Your absence is talking to a lot of people. Little do you know. You not being around is telling people what they need to know. Because when you were around, they didn't even appreciate you. They didn't respect you. Now that you're gone, your absence, that speaks a lot about you. Because you have things to do for God's heavenly kingdom and his glory. You got better things to do. And sometimes people don't appreciate you till you're gone. That's just how we go. That don't mean you got to be people's doormat and come around when you know they're going to mistreat you. Just stay gone. Stay away. Let God deal with these people. It's all you can do. There is hope in your struggle. There is hope. We just got through a major hurricane. A major hurricane. The death toll that I just heard was 86 people. So far, they have found 86. It might be more, but that's what they found so far. And they reported it on the news. We just got through a major hurricane. Pray for the families that lost their loved ones. The hurricane went through Florida. The hurricane went through Tennessee. The hurricane went through Georgia and North Carolina. All those states. Prayers for those that got affected, that still got lights out. There's people with their lights out. I pray that God restored their light unto them, the lights in their home. If they are without power. And I pray that that people are safe. The ones that was able to seek cover and shelter somewhere else from the hurricane. I pray on that as well. There is even hope in that struggle. Dealing with natural disasters. There's hope in that. If God still got you living and breathing another day after experiencing a natural disaster. God is telling you that you should be thankful. It wasn't your time. And you're breathing and living another day. It wasn't your time yet. God is good. Let him get the glory out of that. Tell God thank you. Because he didn't have to wake you up this morning. Somebody didn't survive that hurricane. But you did. You did. So be grateful. Be thankful. Don't let people get to you. There's other things to be concerned about. God got you. God got your situation. And he see. But you're living and breathing another day. To give God the honor the glory and the praise hallelujah sometimes you just gotta wave your hand and say hallelujah thank you heavenly father and just be quiet and be silent in his presence humble your spirit in front of God humble yourself humble yourself peace be still peace be still I don't know who this word is for but peace be still it might even be just for me but it might be for several others out there Peace be still and let the Holy Spirit work on your inner spirit for the glory of the Heavenly Father in heaven. Glory, hallelujah. And that's the prophetic message I have for you, royal ones, on today. There is hope in your struggle. There is hope in everything you go through. Prayers for everybody during this time facing a natural disaster. Prayers. If you recently donated to my channel, this ministry, God bless your house, triple fold. I've been getting a lot of Zelle Cash App and Super Things donations. May God bless you all for that. God bless you all. 
that is appreciated. It shows that you really support this ministry. If you would like to donate to the channel, the description, the links will be in the description box if you're new to the channel. If this word was for you, it's in the description box if you would like to donate, if that's what the Holy Spirit is putting on your heart to do. Pray for somebody. Help those that need help. Help those that need help. You never know who need prayer and who need help. And until next time, family, y'all be blessed. Bye-bye.